meeting to order. Second order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, okay. Sorry, I asked Colin to go get this paragraph for me, but I have it, so I don't want to hold anybody up. I'll just go, go ahead and read it. So the third item on the agenda is public comment. So bear with me for a moment. Hebert Andover and Marlboro Community Engagement and Attendance at the Board of Education Public Meetings is welcome. The public comment segment of the meeting agenda is set aside so the Board of Education may receive public comments. Procedurally, public remarks will be limited to three minutes and citizens will be asked to identify themselves. Because the Board of Education is limited by the Freedom of Information Act to discussing only matters on the agenda, the Board of Education is not permitted to engage in a discussion of the conduct of the record. Mm -hmm. So at this time, I would just ask, is there anybody physically present that came to present uh, Public comment? Okay, no, no way you're being here. Anybody online that is uh, here to present public comment? If you are, please raise your digital hand or speak up so I can acknowledge you. All right, Eric is telling me none. So at this point, we'll move on to item four, which is the presentations and discussions of the pupil uh, personnel, science, and facilities for the FY 2023-2024 budgets. So, uh, thank you, Chair Morris. Uh, I would um, like to thank our uh, staff that is here with us this evening. Um, we have three different departments that are going to be presenting uh, an overview of their budget. They're going to talk about department goals and then some of the drivers that are impacting their budgets for this coming year. Um, as Mike just alluded to, it's going to be special education, science, and our facilities department. And at this time, I'd like to invite Christine Hartwig to the podium to start off with our science. Thank you. Special education. <laughs> you watch it down. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, Christine Harvey, Director of Pupil Services. I also have Kristen Brewer here, who's our Supervisor of Pupil Services. Um, I'm going to start us off uh, for the budget presentations. Um, I'll start with some of the goals we have. Um, I'm going to be presenting special education tonight, even though it says Pupil Services. The other half of our department, us, uh, school counselors, uh, and coordinators will be presenting in a few weeks here for the Pupil Services. Um, so just to start off with some goals, uh, our first goal is to support teachers meeting the needs of all students in the classroom. Uh, we do this through in a variety of ways, such as offering common plan time for co-teachers, time on professional development days for collaboration, weekly meetings with um, admin and department coordinators, counseling providers, uh, SRBI teams, things like that, and making sure that we just have the appropriate classroom programs uh, support uh, teachers and paraprofessionals in the classroom. Um, our second goal is the state recently released a new IEP, a new IEP system called CP SEDS this July. And uh, we spent last year and this year um, training for this new IEP and program. Um, it has not been an easy road. <laughs> There's been lots of glitches, but we have an amazing department and they have persevered and continue to persevere through that. So um, our goal is to adjust to this new program and, and be successful with that and we're so far doing a great job. Our third goal is to focus on data-driven IEP programming and services to ensure that students are receiving the most appropriate programming in the least restrictive environment based on their individualized needs. Um, I think that's the goal for every special ed department to make sure that we use data to drive decisions and make sure we need to change um, And then review and revise our best practices services based on changing um, laws, guidance, things like that, making sure we're staying up to date and adjusting as needed. So I'll transition over to our uh, budget request for this year. Pupils, our special education has kind of three main areas of our budget. Uh, the first is the support for our current programming services and student needs here at Graham in the building. This includes our uh, instructional supplies, make for our classrooms, uh, assessments that we use to um, evaluate students for, for need, um, our software and online programs that help us to gather data and uh, measure progress, and then we have rentals and equipment related to student need. That would be things like um, specialized hearing equipment for students who may be hearing impaired or um, adaptive equipment for students who may have physical disabilities, things like that. Um, so these tend to stay steady from uh, year to year with fluctuations based on need. Um, so that's kind of uh, pretty constant there. The second area is the support to our out-of-district programming. Um, we have students who we have 
in programs outside of our district who are receiving postgraduate services. Those are students between the ages of 18 and 22 who have completed their academic requirements but require transition services based on their individualized needs. Um, so we have a, a number of students, 13 students who are projected to be participating in postgraduate programs next year, um, and we would pay for their tuition and services to participate in those programs. Um, and we are projected to have five students who are placed out of district due to other needs. Um, you know, we have a variety of programs here that support students, but sometimes their needs are more than what we can offer um, in, in the building. So um, there's no specialized programs that exist to help these students uh, make progress. Um, so the other uh, part of that would be our magnet school tuition and services. Um, it, this one is difficult. This is for magnet and to choose to attend magnet or LOAC schools. Um, it's not a choice that we make, it's a choice that they and their family make. But because we are the nexus of the OSEP district, we are responsible for overseeing their IEP. Um, and so in, in, kind of in line with that, we're also responsible for paying their tuition and services to make sure that their IEP is implemented. So this is hard to plan for because we don't often know what students are going where until the summer before school starts. Um, but we do our best to use historical data and convince we have high school counselors and kids that are might be interested, so we do our best to plan for that. Um, one thing to remember about special education is that you need changes all the time. You have students moving into district, you have students moving out of district, you have students who need to have been able to maintain here in, in programs that something changes and things need to be adjusted. Um, so you know we do our best to be flexible and to adapt to those changing needs. Um, so one of those changing things is our transportation for next year. Um, you know, we are responsible for providing uh, in-district transportation for students who require specialized uh, transportation for their IEP. We also provide out-of-district transportation for students who are attending those special programs and need to get there each day. And then we provide transportation for our students who uh, attend our extended school year program in the summer. Um, and transportation costs in general have increased uh, throughout and um, one of the things that we've seen this year is that there has been driver shortage and available, uh, availability shortages. And so we have used different companies that we have in the past just to make sure we get students where they need to go. And those companies' costs vary significantly. And so we had to kind of plan a balance, um, a balance budget to make sure we can, you know, fund all of what we need to get students where they need to go. So um, transportation costs have gone up. to decrease our budget in the areas of magnet and VOAG tuition services as well as our um, private tuition and professional services because we have a number of um, magnet and VOAG students who are either graduating, who are ending in services or returning to RAM. And then we have um, eight students next year who are projected to actually exit from services that reach an out at age 22, um, which is the uh, maximum age of services in the state of Connecticut. So we just happened to fall in a year where we had eight students who are reaching that age. Um, so that obviously uh, helps with budget and, and plan until their 22nd birthday. Um, so that is kind of a summary of our request. And I'll be happy to take questions if you have any. How many postgraduate uh, program students do you say? Uh, for next year, we're projected to have 13. I won't hold you to this, just a ballpark so I can understand a frame of reference for the transportation needs. Approximately how many students are we, in some way, shape, or form, shuttling or transporting? Um, I would be hard for me to answer off the top of my head, but. Um, I, I, won't, like I, said, I won't hold you to a bit of ballpark, like 10, 20? Um, well, every single out of district student needs out of, uh, transportation. So this year, right now, we have 17. Um, and then probably have about 10 to 12 in district that require transportation. Okay. Thank you. I have a follow up question to that. It's in district versus out of district. I know you've probably explained this before, but can you help me understand a little bit better our commitment to the out of district students? So we have two types of out of district students. You have your magnet and BOAG students who, again, choose to attend those those schools, we don't provide the transportation for them, there's other means, unless it's in their IEP that they need that, 
want to see where that's the case. Um, for out-of-district students, we are responsible for um, the tuition to go to the program, the services, which could include physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech, counseling, um, and also the transportation to and from that's are called on us to get them there in the application. Thank you for that. I think I misinterpreted to mean that they live out of district rather than no. they are commuting out of district to another program. That is that is correct. Thank you. Yes. Um, any other questions? Go ahead, Eric. individual education and um, there's a new CTL of students to this category. So that would mean, is, or does that mean that there is uh, a single method for these plans for all uh, public schools in Connecticut? So CT says the new program that they is a common system among our vendors that will house our plans. Mm -hmm. This is a common system for all of Connecticut um, provided by the state, uh, which is new this year. So there's um, lots of glitches and things that the state is trying to address on a day to day basis, but um, it's just been a challenge to kind of change over something that we're used to, um, something that's not quite functioning 100% right. And once it's squared away, do you think that'll be a good thing? There are a lot of positives in the program. There's a lot of Anybody, any of the board members online have any questions? Okay, thank you so much. So next I'd like to ask, uh, introduce and ask Alexa Mitchell to come on up and talk a little bit about the science. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to maintain Similar thing. 
thanks to um, Mr. Carter again that this is where our transportation costs really um, get impacted by the capital of the bus company. So we can see an increase in um, the cost of transportation and um, some of our courses actually require that students are able to travel. For example, our medical careers course, which aligns with two They're required to have experience in shadowing people like at hospitals or um, in labs, college labs, that type of thing. Um, but the, the increase in transportation costs has, um, has impacted our budget in that way as well. Um, the exercise physiology course, we're looking to get a textbook for so that we can ensure we're providing all the students with um, an up to date text. As a part of this course, they're able to walk away with um, a certification in personal training. We want to maintain our digital tools. So for those labs that we really can't do in a high school setting, um, online or simulation type labs help us to continue to provide uh, lab experiences. And then we would also like to provide our classes with um, some calculators for the math Which thing I wanted to, to throw at you, this is not necessarily something I need an answer for or expect you to you know, come back with anything, but just to make it aware, I love the part about what, what RAM does across the board in setting students up for next next uh, phase of the life, whether it's going to do some sort of a career or if it's going to college or whatever. I, I, I love the RAM's focus on that. And one thing that I, I um, was fortunate enough to participate in this weekend is uh, uh, working with um, students mostly either recently graduated or about to graduate high school kids who are getting a little bit extra um, teaching in math and English to pass the armed services vocational vocational aptitude battery mm. and as part of that test there uh, is a general science portion mm. of it that I'm not really even sure that if you are if you're a science teacher who never really considered the military you might not even be aware of the fact that a lot of students probably go take that test. If there's anything that we can, you know, even if it's just some sort of a review or something where we can point them to, you know, some websites or something that might help them kind of study up for that, because that is one thing that I think limits some of our, our students that go out and it, it prevents them from getting some of the higher tech jobs in either the Air Force or the Navy specifically. So uh, okay. I just wanted to throw that out. It was interesting to me that I, I'd forgotten that that piece was in there. Yes. When I took the test, I think I chiseled it out of a stone tablet or something like that. It was a long time ago. Yeah, that is a long time ago. So I did get a question from a board member about the increase in the science transportation, and so hopefully Alexa framed the response as to why we're seeing that increase. Is just overall there's a transportation increase. The, I will tell you the, the department coordinators do a really good job uh, essentially spending a lot of time shopping around. Um, what I mean by that is we have to identify a dollar amount that we anticipate each field trip is going to cost, which is what the department coordinators do. But when it comes to them actually identifying the bus company that we're going to utilize to provide transportation, they will spend time communicating with other transportation companies. We've even gone as far this year, we were just talking about it earlier on, like if we have a small number of students taking a field trip, if we can get away with using a livery company as opposed to using a, a, a short um, a bus that's going to cost exponentially more, we, we go into those those types of extremes. So, but the increase for the science transportation budget is, is really specifically rooted in just the transportation costs across the board will increase exponentially. Is it that combined with the fact that we're coming out of COVID and that there are fewer trips, mm -hmm. perhaps, that are much more expensive? So, if I can jump in here, there's a bus driver shortage, and that is the main reason why the costs have skyrocketed because bus companies are able to do the home to school runs, but the extras are really finding a harder time getting bus drivers. We still, um, have, we do maintain what the field trips are for our years. We were impacted significantly during COVID. We couldn't go to the hospitals. And there's even some um, places that we did not let us in. <laughs> But we're hoping that as we come out of the pandemic that we will be able to go at everything we used to. Um, but for planning purposes, our, our number of trips has changed. Thank you. Thank you.
Any other questions for me? Go ahead, Eric. Um, can the calculator, the idea would be when you buy a badge, and it's the same calculator that goes to all the students and you're kind of training them on that. Correct. Yeah. I, I like, I personally like that. Um, as a parent, I can remember anxiously trying to get the right machine. The model numbers look alike. Is, is it really going to do the trick? So I think it's a uh, positive thing to, to, to offer this. And of course, then you've got families with varying needs. Um, one other thing, and, and this might be for my sharing, but you can support me, and that is that. There was, as I recall, um, a capital item for stools or seats to go in the uh, science laboratory so that the uh, students can now have the luxury of putting their, their legs under the table mm -hmm. rather than beside. So that's correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Got it. Uh, anyone, any board members online with questions? Go. Thank you very much. So our last department this evening is going to be our facility department, so I will invite Mike Schleyhoff. Thanks, guys. Uh, all right, before I um, review goals, I'd like to give some uh, background content on um, building sizes and square footage that we, we um, take care of. Uh, the high school, believe it or not, next month will be 20 years, um, 2,500 square feet of building. The uh, middle school was renovated as new in 2004, uh, roughly 135,000 square feet. Two buildings combined, 385,000 square feet of building to maintain. Um, outside grounds, uh, we sit on 52 acres of land. Um, we have roughly six acres of grass, common areas we call it, and nine acres of uh, athletic fields. Uh, just a short summary on staffing levels, we have two full-time custodians on days, one in the middle school, one in the high school. Um, we have 12 full-time custodians at night with four in middle school and eight in the high school. And as far as maintainers go, we have three maintainers, we have two on days, one dedicated to the building, one dedicated to grounds. And then we have a third maintainer on evenings who is also the night lead for the custodial team. So department goals, um, we're looking to provide a safe, clean learning environment, both for students and staff, so that they can focus on their education. Another goal is to um, keep changing mandates, is to stay in line with state mandates and avoid any financial um, negative uh, impacts by not following the mandates. You'll hear more about that coming up. Um, focusing on communication by increasing staff utilization in the work order system so that we can have a more organized approach to scheduling and finalizing work orders. And uh, finally, keeping up to date with uh, energy efficiency programs. Um, for example, the summer months, we're usually asked to um, load shed so that we can offset our peak demand for um, the fall year. Next slide. So, touch on the unfunded mandates that just came out. So, HVAC inspection slash review. Uh, prior to January 1st, 2024, and every five years after, every local board of education must provide a uniform inspection and evaluation of the HVAC system. This will consist of texting. Testing maximum air filter efficiency, physical measurement of outside air delivery, verification of appropriate condition and operation of the ventilation components, 
measurement of air distribution throughout all system outlets and inlets, verification of unit operation and that the required maintenances have been performed, verification of carbon dioxide sensors, verification of control sequencing, and supply a written report and attend a public board meeting to discuss the findings and recommendations moving forward. The next one is uh, beginning in September 1st, 2023, which is this fall. All third grade to 12th grade schools are required to supply and dispense free feminine hygiene products. Products must be located in every woman's bathroom, all gender bathrooms, and at least one men's bathroom with each other. Uh, another, um, I wouldn't say the state level, but um, the CIAC board, who um, the your apartment, I'm sorry. It's funny. Um, <laughs> Um, have approved or decided to vote on um, bringing shot clocks to the varsity level for basketball. Mike, they're going to love it, I guess. Well, I should know the CIAC. It is what it is. Um, so, due to this, um, obviously the clocks that are the scoreboards that we have in the high school gym, 20 years old, um, implementing them into the existing system is almost half the cost of a new scoreboard. So um, it was a recommendation of the athletic director and myself to instead of trying to retrofit uh, shot clocks into the existing system, it would be to um, replace the current system with a new scoreboard and shot clocks. Uh, so supply chain and inflation issues. Obviously, natural gas has, um, has gone up immensely. Um, just last year, we were um, actually $10,000 under budget. So the increase that you're seeing is, um, is the um, under budget amount that we had last year plus additional for next year. Uh, propane is up. Uh, we use propane at the maintenance garage. Um, Heating. Again, propane prices have gone up, um, but usage is really steady. Uh, diesel for um, our maintenance equipment and our generator um, that falls under my accounts. Um, usage remains the same, but um, the price has gone up. And in supplies, maintenance supplies, uh, we're requesting 26 padlocks for maintenance. And then also, which is another driver in that account, is the middle school has um, air handlers and they have a, they call it box filters, which change once every five years. Um, these filters are due next summer. We are purchasing the filters for the vendor to install. A cost savings because we're buying only clothes and buying at the market now. So um, those filters are in the supply budget. Um, also, custodial supplies in general, everything has increased pricing wise as far as trash bags, paper towels, toilet paper, hand soap, gloves. Um, and vendors have actually now started charging fuel surcharges and shipping and minimum orders um, that we've absorbed. Um, as far as the equipment goes, there are some increases in the equipment accounts. Um, Looking to replace four wet, wet dry vats for custodial. We utilize 90% um, of the time in the summer for stripping and whacking the floors. Um, four, four dryers slash air movers is what we call them. There's also a request for uh, a new washer and dryer for facilities. We, um, we take care of all of our dust mops, wet mops, and rags in the house. They don't get shipped out. And dryer in here. Um, so it's important to maintain that washer and dryer back there so that we can have adequate um, supplies. 
There's also a request for a replacement washer slash dryer for athletic training area in the budget as well. Um, the feminine hygiene dispensers fall under um, the maintenance equipment account. And then uh, repair, I'm uh, sorry, replacement of the scoreboard that I talked about earlier is in that equipment account as well. Um, we've also, and we'd like to continue with replacing two water fountains um, with bottle fill slash water fountains, one in each building. And then um, aluminum hash mark stencil kit for the grounds department to help in the ease of painting the hash marks on the comp field. This would allow him to, it's like a tool behind um, stencil kit that he'd be able to paint behind paint and do the face of the linear operation as opposed to now to see that I've been allowed to do um, hash mark stencils in the wall. Um, installation of five cameras proposed for the two lecture halls. There's a stairwell in the middle school and then the middle school media center. There's also um, a mobile security desk station for the evening door person when somebody is there that would um, house a computer, the phone, camera system, and the intercom system on it. I also have a few furniture requests from um, two buildings. I'm going to go over uh, the middle school first. Um, so, middle school English department is requesting a couple of tables for um, a few classrooms down there. Replacing office chairs for middle school guidance and the middle school main office. Eight sit slash stand desks on wheels. Uh, an additional whiteboard for a classroom. Two replacement plane cabinets for the wood shop uh, paint booth. And a reception desk for the main entrance area in the middle school. For the high school, uh, a glass display case for the art gallery, display artwork. Um, two four-person workbench stations for the art department. Uh, particularly at the classroom, they have four um, stations in there, and two of them, um, their lockers are mounted underneath that are falling apart, or holding them back together, you know, trying to make it as best as we can, until we can um, budget appropriately to replace them. Try to do two of those the next year, and then hopefully maybe the other two the following year. Um, high school 16 sit and stand desks for the high school in various areas. Uh, the science department at the high school has also requested a conference table for their um, office. So every faculty office has their own conference room with the table and chairs. Science department why does not have it in the conference room, so they've made space for a conference table, they just need funding for um, room 325 in high school. This was discussed, I think, at facilities and um, finance joint meeting, but um, replacement cabinets for room 325 is also in the high school furniture request. Uh, additional whiteboard for the math department and then a reception uh, style desk for the main entrance area of the high school. And some additional um, repair and maintenance requests. Um, we're looking to uh, replace the high school nursing office flooring, final sheet goods um, that are falling apart in there. Uh, the high school main entrance um, Threshold and mullions in that, that area particularly have uh, a rotting out and need to be removed and replaced. Uh, replacement uh, locks for the all gender bathrooms. Um, this would pro provide occupancy indicators. So currently, right now, everybody's banging on the door to find out if somebody's in there or not, or they only handle. Um, this is a, a big request. 
us to a lot of people to new features. Um, adding a fob access to the head end when it was security reasons, reasons obviously. Um, able to take accountability for who's going in that um, head end room or data room as we call it. Uh, I got another science request. Uh, so they have doors in between each classroom, and for security reasons, they want to be able to lock that door so that if they go under lockdown, if somebody's not in the adjacent classroom, they're able to lock that door and secure themselves in that room as opposed to Another thing in uh, repair and maintenance was uh, building a containment area up by the maintenance building to house topsoil, infield mix, processed stone, stone dust. Um, currently, these materials are dumped and housed behind the bleachers over by the top field, uh, which pose a safety issue when you have kids and stuff climbing on them. And then another request, this was something that came through our consultant with the two um, laser grades, the three infields. Uh, so the one softball field and then the two varsity baseball fields. Uh, this is normally like a three, what, what I've heard is a three year cycle. So this was done. This would be third year of this was done. This would be required to do. Um, when we did this in the past, we only did baseball fields. We're going to be able to focus to softball as well this time, but all three are done. Um, the last thing is the varsity baseball dugout is to remove and replace the shingles on the roof that are lifting over there. So, um, and then of course, um, after taking care of all that increases, I do have some reductions. They're not a lot, but um, so electric, electricity repair and maintenance was reduced. HVAC repair and maintenance are able to reduce. Environmental testing was reduced because of there's no need for the next year. Electricity in general went down um, just due to usage, not the breaks or anything. I know it's probably shocking. Um, but um, thanks to Eva and negotiating a good contract with our supply rate, we're locked in until November 24 on our supply rate. Well, right now we're still locked in on our four-year contracts. Um, and then vehicle gasoline um, usage has gone down, so that was reduced. And then um, capital improvement um, budget, uh, I want to say it was endorsed at the Joint Finance Facility Subcommittee meeting, and um, that can be found on page 37 of the budget book. Happy to answer any questions or um, talk about anything that you guys. Okay. Sure. I just, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, speaking of fossil fuels, yep. what is our practice with regard to bulk purchasing or uh, in the case of diesel? Are we required to buy highway diesel as opposed to off road diesel? We purchased the diesel through the town of Hoover, so I can't tell you what they what they buy, but we, we go down to the town of Rod, we have a canyon, we purchase the diesel through what they use on air trucks, and um, they fill us supporting the gas that we purchase through them. I'm gonna jump in here in a second. So um, so Michael's diesel is very minute to the budget. He only has to buy for the generator and for one, one vehicle that is a diesel truck and plus the component equipment. Um, the remainder of the diesel, and again, we don't have any tanks, so we don't purchase the diesel ourselves. We rely on all three towns to, to purchase the diesel, and based on um, a percentage split, we split it with the towns. Um, so for school buses, you're required to use ultra low sulfur diesel. We're not allowed to use anything else. So that's so currently there's a price of four dollars and seventy nine cents in the budget because none of the three towns had locked in at the time. 
That was the highest price that I was re I had paid this current school year. All the research I did shows that the price of diesel has to come down. Um, they had to come down tremendously, but um, the town of Andal was just locked in yesterday, so you do not see that reduction as of yet. But that will, when we start doing reductions, that will be taken into account. I have a follow up to that. Okay. Not only do we have to pay the busing companies for the use of their buses and, and supplying of drivers, but we also buy them their fuel. So they're transporting our students. Um, we don't have to pay taxes like the contractor would, so we would be paying more if we didn't do what we did. Okay. Nearby bus company. I'll yeah. the same thing. Please do. We need bus drivers out. There's a special thing waiting for special transportation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that's common practice because um, I feel like the towns um, have better accountability for when they're fueling up than letting the contractor just purchase and tell you how much that they fuel up their buses. So this is common practice across the state of Connecticut. This is not something that they Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? President? Go ahead, Eric. Uh, I have a, a vague recollection that there was uh, a, a request for a replacement of furniture from the library, or whatever the library is called. Maybe I'm thinking of last year. Or, I'm not no, sure. it was this year. That was this year. Yeah. Yes. Can you talk about it? We didn't uh, move forward with it. Okay. We wanted to just fight the capital budget on uh -huh. a certain threshold. Okay. And um, the uh, the shot clock is it just for this gym? Yeah, it's just for the high school. Okay. Yep. And this is those things on like on top there and right. town stand. Yep. Got it. Yep. But you're talking about replacing the whole scoreboard, right? Yeah, so they would they would install two shot clocks, wire shot clocks, the wire scoreboard, and then the auxiliary scoreboard and controller with all the supplies. I didn't mean to cut you off in the middle, but I just wanted to ask. I mean, are, are we going to repurpose this thing or something? Because the one hanging up there is not wrong with it, right? Nothing's wrong with it. It's just um, as it's aging, it's getting more difficult. Uh, Net those getting more considered more difficult to find and replace the parts for. Board went out or something. No, I mean, I get it. In order to comply with the state for varsity basketball, you're going to have to have an incorporated shot clock. So at some point, you probably don't have any choice. And if it costs less or if it's just as much almost to replace it, I get it. I just was wondering if, if there wasn't anything wrong with that. If the middle school can't use it, if the middle school can't use it, then I would assume somebody else can. So. So, oh, somebody got one, yeah. Uh, I guess the only other question I had was um, uh, if we're, I mean, I don't want to get into the weeds on this, and I'm sure the athletic director has an opinion on it, but since multiple sports share that gym, it would be nice if we're buying a shot clock that incorporated all the different sports, not just necessarily basketball. If we're being honest about it, I mean wrestling. <laughs> not that there's any bias, just saying. I just want to uh, circle back on the um, disposal. So, like, if, if um, the scoreboard that we're getting rid of is functioning and works, and you know it's considered uh, obsolete equipment, um, we would offer that to three towns. Nobody, none of the towns wanted it. We then have the ability to sell it on such like the auction. I understand that. I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Mary. You might be on mute. Oh, sorry about that. Um, I just want to follow up on the new state mandated HVAC review. Um, did you say it's every five years? Correct. Okay. Yep. And now, I, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask it anyway because I. I just feel like some of this stuff is, um, it's good to know, for everybody to know. Um, I assume that we cannot approve 
any of these costs annually? Yeah, this is more of an accounting question, but because the way our budget works, are we allowed to approve any of these costs, or do we just have to pay the lump every five years? You'd have to pay the lump every five years. That's what I thought. Mine was, <laughs> I was hoping that there was someone, because it just, you know, it's, it's a lot when you have to come up with that every five years. That's why we labeled it an unfunded mandate. Right. Right. Okay, thank you. Uh, I follow up on unfunded mandates because there was a little change of land, but can we talk about the cost associated with each of these mandates so that we're all well aware of what our state's yeah. to do? So the, the HVAC mandate, I have a budget number of $104,000 for that review. And the feminine hygiene products is present. I have, that's roughly at 80,000 for 42 centers plus product. And the shot clock. The shot clock. Uh, 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 yeah, so 13,300. Or it's like 60 6200 or something to just do shot clocks. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Go ahead, Heather. Um, this is why I have a personal interest in the feminine hygiene products. Um, is there a reason that you have to replace all the dispensers and you just can't take the coin mechanism out of it? So the the current dispensers are actually not ADA compliant. So this would, this would kind of um, alleviate both, both issues as far as making them free, but then also um, creating them so that they're ADA compliant. Great, okay, thanks. Erica, how do you want to go around? Did you have anything else that you want to add? Just to address this, as you know, we, uh, we're, we're targeting now around $500,000 per year for capital and as a goal. And our hope is to keep that essentially for a pound of over until you know, some good comes along. You buy an anchor up or use it for whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is that, uh, how's that working? Uh, I do it fine, um, but in the capital, um, we have money set aside for a building survey of the envelope that we sign now. So I'm feeling that that will help stage a new 10 year plan for the district. So when that is complete, uh, you know, we're in the next year. Uh, we'll get that moving forward. Because the current capital plan, I think. Built off twenty uh, what it was done in tw twenty fifteen, yeah. so it's it's getting a revised look and recommendations as far as what there is. So I think we'll have a better sense of where we'll be yeah. with the five hundred thousand dollars once we get that taken care of. Right. Well, plus it's going to give us a, a look at it. Right? Yeah. This is we're going to have to plan for some pretty significant improvements. Now. So I think we're going to look at new things. We're going to look at more of those. Which are likely bond items, right? And so our hope, I think, is that we can put those, schedule those uh, improvements until after the school bond is, is removed. And then we can cut additional funds at that time so we're not kind of going off of this. Yeah, I was just, I, I, I've been generally aware of it, just was curious as to how it's going. You know, what's your, what's your thoughts? Keep it up with it, right? We don't have any you know, emergencies necessarily other than the well. <laughs> yeah, other than the well. February 10th. That's what you're okay. Yeah. However, however, we were, we did have the funds to do that. We were fortunate to do that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. So it's not, not a disaster. I don't know. 
I asked Mike this earlier, and I'm, I'm sure it's the same answer, but just, you know, we have this facility, this capital um, plan or facilities capital plan. Uh, I think it was a 10 year projection five years ago. And I know that certainly those things have been flow a little bit, but you feel pretty confident that we're still somewhat tracking on the major items there. And Mike was even saying that potentially, you know, given a new, new assessment, like say, for example, on the roof, maybe there's an opportunity to push that back. Yeah. But do you feel confident that what we're working off our plan right now is, is in the same ballpark? Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Any other questions? Anybody else online with questions? Else? So, uh, I received, uh, there's no other presentations. Um, I mean, if there's general questions from the board, um, I can certainly try to address those. Um, it's helpful to get them advanced so we can make sure that we're prepared to answer them. Um, I did get some questions late uh, from, from, from Mike, uh, and I'm happy to try to the best of my ability to go through the ones um, that I feel comfortable providing a response to. Um, I can certainly do that. So, actually, a lot of the things were discussed because many of the questions fell under facilities. So we talk about the $104,000 for the HVAC reuse, we talk about the $80,000 uh, for the equipment for the um, sanitary napkins and dispensers. Um, some of the other things you would ask about the shot clock is one of the things that falls, falls under that increase that you're seeing um, athletic repairs and maintenance. Uh, that, that's a $13,000 price tag. Um, uh, athletic supplies, I think the general supplies for athletics also had an increase um, that you had asked about, and that's actually um, progressing that. So we don't want to do those kind of conversation with this gentleman. Uh, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so that's um, I think the rest of the mats are approximately twelve thousand uh, dollars for, for the new mats. Um, the the um, Eva, I'm going to defer to you for this. Uh, one of the questions that was asked was, has diesel consumption increased? or just the cost per gallon. My thought is it's just the cost per gallon, but I, 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 I want to confirm that with you. Well, so that's twofold. So it's the cost per gallon, but then Hebron um, chose to renegotiate our percentage and the agreement we entered took us away from a 50-50 split with an additional $12,000 for additional fuel to a 62.89% split for us and the remainder for them. Thank you. Um, did you get the question answered about the building operations sewer water through Michael's presentation? No, that one is still up. I, um, Can you speak to that? Yeah, so it's the sewer fees. Um, they increased this budget year, which was an unbudgeted amount of like eight or nine thousand dollars that I had to find and transfer. Um, so I added that amount into next year's budget, plus some factoring possible 3% increase because um, it seems that the Water Sewer Commission does their um, votes and approval of increases in June after our budget's already done. So it's not very helpful. Um, but thank you for the explanation. And then there was a question I know from Mike as well as Eric. I'll just speak to the. There was a question about the piano. There's a, a pretty hefty price tag for a, a baby, a new baby grand piano, in the budget. I'm, I'm thinking it's an approximately a forty thousand dollar increase, maybe a little bit more than that. So I can provide the board with a higher level of specificity related to the piano. Um, I was trying to dig through my emails and find it. I just couldn't track it down. Anecdotally, what I can remember to the best of my ability is the piano that we purchased when the new building was built 20 years ago was already 10 to 15 years old. So we purchased a used piano. Um, the piano has been, it's, it's annually maintained um, and we do the best job that we can. So we think it's 10 to 15 years old, out of 20 years, we're, we're looking at a 35 year old piano. Um, it's, it's, it's been upkeep, the music department does a really good job of, of keeping it up and, and having maintenance done. And essentially what the person who does the maintenance um, uh, on a regular basis has said is, at this point it is not worth, um, it, is, it is just not worth maintaining this because it's, it's just it's warping, it's, it, which is gonna end up having impact on the sound and the quality of the piano as, as 
it's not in here now, but it's typically in this room, but it's moved back and forth to the stage from concerts and performances. Um, humidity has an impact on the, the, uh, the wood and the structure of the piano. Um, and so essentially, uh, the recommendation at this point from the person who does the maintenance for it is, it's, it's just not worth continuing to invest the money into that. Um, again, I can, I can get the higher level of specificity about the dates of, of purchase and the ages and all that stuff, but that's essentially where we are with Baby Bear Grand, Baby Grand Piano. The thing that I would say is, if you think about the fact that our current one is approximately 30 to 35 years old, I understand that a $40,000 investment is a big one, but that plays out over time. I mean, you're, you're making a substantial investment, um, and, and hopefully it's gonna last us for about 30 to 35 years. Oh, totally get it. Um, considering the used piano was purchased originally, is that not something that's up for consideration used or? It's, it's certainly something that we could look into, um, but again, the recommendation is just to make the initial investment into a new piano. Yeah, I'll, I'll run with the I guess the only thing I would first I would just say thank you to everybody for taking the time to come here and put this together and, and bring this up to date. I mean I, I think this is my third go around getting this down. I think this is probably the first time that I came in here reasonably well prepared to understand what you're trying to explain to us. So it takes time for us to catch up with with what um, with what you're briefing. I think the only thing I would I would ask all of you, and it, you know, is that you briefing the goals of your your different departments. I mean, based on what you were what we're budgeting right now, is it is it safe to assume that you're confident you can achieve the goals that you you brief here based on what we're budgeting presently? Because I'd hate for you to come up and brief goals and then we pass a budget that doesn't meet, you know, doesn't facilitate that. So I'll, I'll buy no shaking of heads side to side. I'm going to assume that that's it. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't think, anybody else online, any other questions? Okay, so we have another budget workshop scheduled for next week where other departments are gonna be presenting theirs in a very similar fashion. We're trying to make sure that we have continuity and a similar uh, structure to how the budget presentations were done by the different departments. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're, we're scheduled, I believe, for next Wednesday at 6.30. And I'll send some information out on Okay, so item six is uh, public comment. Again, if you'll just bear with me. Hebert Andover and Marble Community Engagement and Attendance, the Board of Education Public Meetings is welcome. The public comment segment of the meeting agenda is set aside so the Board of Education may receive public comments. Procedurally, public remarks will be limited to three minutes and citizens will be asked to identify themselves. Because the Board of Education is limited by the Freedom of Information Act and discussing only matters on the agenda, the Board of Education is not permitted to engage in a discussion of the comments presented. At this time, is there anybody present that wanted to present public comment? Hearing none, is there anyone online that is here to present public comment? If you are, please either raise your digital hand or make yourself known. Eric's giving me the side to side, so I'm gonna assume that it's safe to say that we do not. And if that is the case, then um, do I need to make a motion to adjourn at that point? Just a motion. Okay, well, so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Mike moves it. Eric, can I have a second? Eric seconds it. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, do a voice vote. All in favor? Uh, any opposed? Hearing none, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody.